Good morning, family. Today is the day of Pentecost. Pentecost means 50 days, and it's been 50 days since the day of Easter. Now, Pentecost is what we call the birthday of the Christian church. The first day of Pentecost was the moment when God's people were filled with the Holy Spirit. That story is found in Acts chapter 2. In fact, most of the time we read that story on Pentecost Sunday. But today I'd like us to look at a passage from John chapter 20. Okay? Here's the context. It's the evening of the day of Jesus' resurrection. He appeared to his disciples who were hiding behind locked doors. Then he gave them his spirit. It's a pre-Pentecost Pentecost experience. So let's look at John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. Hear the word of the Lord. That evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors in fear of the Jewish leaders when suddenly Jesus was standing there among them. After greeting them, he showed them his hands and side. And how wonderful was their joy as they saw their Lord. He spoke to them again and said, As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and told them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you refuse to forgive them, they are unforgiven. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. So we say, thanks be to God. Did you catch what happened? Jesus showed them his hands and his side. That doesn't sound a lot like Pentecost, does it? When we think of Pentecost, we usually envision a mighty wind and tongues of fire, right? We usually think of people speaking in various languages and an intoxicating presence of the Holy Spirit. That's how Luke presents Pentecost in the book of Acts. But John's portrayal of Pentecost in his gospel account is different and it's distinct. John gives us a more subdued and intimate encounter with the Holy Spirit. John's version entails locked doors, fear and wounds, peace, a shared breath, and being sent out. In John's gospel, the Pentecost experience takes place on Easter evening with the disciples cowering in fear in a locked room when suddenly Jesus appears to them, offering words of comfort. Peace be with you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. There's the Pentecost connection. The breath of God, the Spirit of God, filling God's people. But in all that, did you notice that Jesus made an effort, took the time to show them his wounds from the crucifixion? He showed his disciples the nail holes in his hands and the spear wound in his side. So why did Jesus do that? What was he trying to communicate to his followers? And what is he saying to us today? Well, let's take a moment to think about the significance of of Jesus showing his wounds to the disciples. You see, it's not just about identifying and verifying Jesus as the one who was crucified. No, I think it goes much deeper than that. When Jesus showed his wounds, he was connecting with every person who has ever been hurt. He was connecting with anyone and everyone who has ever been wounded in any way. Have you ever been hurt? Have you ever been wounded? Then Jesus connects with you. You see, the open wounds of Jesus hold the pain of the entire world. As we look at Jesus' wounded hands and side, we should see the wounds that we ourselves have experienced. But there's more. We should also see the wounds of others. The wounded body of Jesus is a powerful symbol of our wounded world where pain is found everywhere we look. Now, I wonder what that brings up for you today. What hurts your heart? What are the tender spots of your life? What's festering deep inside you that you don't want anyone else to see? Where do you see someone else hurting today? Can you hold his or her gaze? Or do you look away because you just don't want to see? In what ways have you and I added to the pain of other people? I don't know about you, but the daily news breaks my heart. We see fear. We see death. We see protests. We see anger. We see violence. We see prejudice and racism. We see arrogance. We see privilege. 
We see unemployment. We see poverty and economic hardship. Those are the open wounds of our country, and we're hemorrhaging. We're bleeding out, and it's hard to breathe. America is in a hard place these days. We have been for quite a while. But we're not all together in this. We're not all together in one place on this day of Pentecost. Our country is divided, fragmented, and wounded. And so is my heart. And maybe yours is too. It isn't always easy to discuss our wounds, whether they're personal wounds or collective wounds. It's difficult to confront the pain that we've either endured or that we've inflicted upon others. To truly examine our wounds means taking a hard look at our own actions and our inactions. It also means accepting responsibility for our lives. It requires us to not only value our own wounds, but to also recognize and honor the wounds of others. To do this, we may need to offer forgiveness or to seek forgiveness. We, we need to extend a hand to someone in need. We need to allow ourselves to be vulnerable and accept help from others. Healing our wounds may require us to offer ointment to others or to receive ointment from those who care for us. It takes courage to open up and share our pain, but it is only by doing so that we can begin to move forward towards a path of healing and wholeness. So let's all take a moment to reflect on our wounds and how we can offer healing and support to one another as we journey through this life together. Even though it's important to confront and heal our wounds, it's incredibly difficult to face them head on. It requires us to be vulnerable. It requires us to open ourselves to the possibility of more pain. Do you know this? Sometimes it's easier to pretend that our wounds just don't exist. It's easier to push them down and forget about them. We might even blame others for our pain or use our wounds as a way to seek attention or sympathy. And sadly, in our darkest moments, we might even use our wounds to justify hurting others. But thankfully, Jesus doesn't shy away from his wounds. He doesn't hide them or use them for his own gain. Instead, he appears before the disciples, despite their fear and the locked doors, and he offers them peace. Then he reveals his wounds to them, showing them the very things that brought him anguish and suffering. And yet he still offers them peace peace. The wounds of Jesus are his glories. They are his jewels. By his wounds, we are healed, and through his wounds, we find peace. Now, what if that's true for all of us? What if we all possess a wounded peace? What if the only genuine peace we can offer comes from the wounds that we have endured? Long ago, the prophet Isaiah told us that Jesus was wounded and bruised for our sins. He was beaten that we might have peace. He was lashed and we were healed. Isn't that wonderful news? So when you're afraid and when you've locked the doors of your house, your heart, your life, Jesus still shows up and says, peace be with you. What does that mean? What does that peace signify in all the craziness we see around us? What does that peace mean as we continue to draw lines between those who are right and those who are wrong? Who's in and who's out? Peace be with you, Jesus said. What does that mean to you? Peace be with you. What does that mean in light of America's racism? Peace be with you. What does that mean in light of our political divide? Peace be with you. What does that mean for you and for me today? What is this peace Jesus offers? What does it look like or feel like? I don't have a lot of answers to the questions. Each one of us must figure out how to be peace in our world. I can't tell you how to do that, but I can tell you this. The peace Jesus offers doesn't mean serenity or lack of conflict. It doesn't mean that we necessarily get our way. I think it's more than a truce or an agreement to disagree or the resignation to go along in order to get along. The peace Jesus offers changes hearts. It sends people into the world. It heals lives and lets people breathe. The peace Jesus offers will be found next to our wounds. It's a wounded peace, and we are called to be wounded healers. Peace be with you, Jesus says. 
What will you do with your wounded piece today? To whom will you offer it? And how will you let it make a difference in the life of someone else? Let's pray. Good and gentle Father, thank you for sending Jesus to his disciples to breathe on them and give them your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your Spirit that continues to empower us, to guide us, and to comfort us. Fill us with your Spirit today. May we be bold witnesses for you. Help us to proclaim your love and grace to a world that desperately needs it. Just as the disciples received the power to forgive sins, may we too share your forgiveness and grace with those around us. May we be instruments of your peace, healing, and reconciliation. We pray for unity in your church. Help us to be one as you are one. May your Holy Spirit continue to bind us together in love and mission. We also lift up those who are struggling today, whether it be with illness, grief, loneliness, or other hardships. We ask that your healing and comforting presence would be with them and that they would experience your grace and mercy in tangible ways. Help us to love the things that you love and to be made angry by the things that make you angry. And now using the words debts and debtors, let us pray with boldness the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As always, thank you. I really do appreciate you joining me today, and I hope these words were helpful to you. If they were, will you like, review, and share this episode? If you leave a good review, it will help other people to find and benefit from these devotional thoughts. By the way, if you have a need or a prayer request, please leave a message in the comments section and then be assured that I will be praying for you and your need. Now, this week, your job is to love at least three people and make sure at least one of them doesn't deserve it. Why? Because everyone needs love, and everyone needs to know that God loves them no matter what. Right? Remember, with Jesus, we always, always, always have hope. Now receive these words of benediction. May the Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face to you and grant you his peace. Amen? Amen. Amen.